So VidCon was last week, and I heard that was interesting from people who were there. I've heard a, a tale of many a drama, because if you know how <laughs> YouTube is, it's for some reason just full of crazy drama. Um, but I think now, more than ever, we need to not think about the things that divide us. We have so much stuff going for us as YouTubers, and we have so many things to overcome. There are changes to to the ad system, there are changes to the community aspects, there are changes to how people perceive us as a media uh, uh, enterprise. So we need to come together to solve these problems. There's new conversations happening. I mean, Lacey Green is example uh, A, and uh, there's there's just... The, the medium in itself is growing larger than I think any of us really imagined. And the, the idea of us being able to get together from time to time and really not just like engage in interpersonal relationships and rub Bunty King's beard, but really just, I don't know, be a community that's actually a community sometimes. Not to mention, this is the only job I've ever done where no one can see me from the waist down, so I get to jerk off at work, and that's... Pretty great. Everyone, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And we didn't go to VidCon because we forgot about it. And <laughs> this is the Bible Reloaded. Might have been for the best. Anyway, um, <laughs> I guess it depends on who you talk to. But anyway, today we're here back to read more of the Bible. We're actually going to finally finish Isaiah today. And we're right on our way to the New Testament. So close. So close. And actually today we're going to talk about uh, some stuff because this chapter is often credited and looked at as sort of... Uh, the genesis of many of the ideas surrounding the New Testament and Christianity. Uh, and yes, I used the word genesis on purpose. Aren't I clever? So today we're going to continue <laughs> in Isaiah 55, Invitation for the Thirsty, where we're going to start to get some of these, uh, not only Christian imagery, but Christian verbiage. Uh, and of course, that comes from yeah. translation, but... You know. Well, and also, also, I mean, chronologically speaking, you are closer to that culture that created Christianity. I mean, not, I mean, we're talking several generations still, many decades, but um, it's still, you could definitely tell, and you, you'll see why. This is more of a, um, it's not necessarily the foundation of Christianity. It's more like they dug the hole that the foundation's going to go in. It's the bedrock, let's say. Well, I mean, okay. Upstage, man. I'm sorry, my metaphors are better than yours. Anyway, chapter 55. Come, all who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, that sounds buy like, and no, wait, wait, That sounds like a Craigslist ad for a sugar daddy. <laughs> come, <laughs> buy and eat. All who are thirsty, tall drink of water right here. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen. Listen to me and eat what is good, and you will delight in the riches of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. Oh, that's a little uh, romantic from God. But here, talking about God's covenant. Obviously, there have been covenants in the past in the Bible. For instance, the main one at this point, or there'll be two main ones. Firstly, uh, he made a covenant with Noah, never to flood the earth again. And he also uh, made one with the nation of Israel to protect them as long as they are obedient and follow his rules. Ooh, that didn't always go great, no. Hitler. Um, but also, <laughs> uh, it's nice of him to make a promise like, don't flood the earth, be because he can't. You know what's nicer than promising not to kill every living thing on earth? What? Um, not having to promise not to kill every living thing on earth. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. So, 
interesting, uh, make it a new covenant saying, he's obviously talking about the covenant with David and, uh, Israel as a whole, but you also get sort of, we're going to start a new covenant, maybe. We're going to have a new agreement, and that's interesting. Obviously, that you can infer how that plays into Christianity. And then he goes on to talk about all the splendor he provides. Like, hey, thorn bushes now have berries on them. Maybe he just didn't understand, like, how raspberries work. Maybe he's like, it's just thorny. And then later on, there's just some fruits. He's like, holy shit, God is super cool. Like, he made that... That shitty bush be less shitty bush. <laughs> Wouldn't it be weird to be fucking bamboozled by a fruit bush? Jesus was. That's true. Well, it's a tree. It's a tree, but yeah. It's a tree, you're right. Trees, trees are just big bushes, right? They're just <laughs> girth bushes. Trees are the bosses of plants. Okay, so a bush is a dick, but a tree is a cock. There's an implicit girth to it. Trees of the BBC of the arboreal community. Next, we're going to skip ahead a little to Isaiah 59, verse 16. This is where we sort of get God's motivation, almost, I guess, for why he's doing what he's going to do and destroy things and bring about the end of the world. And if you're a Christian, you're going to argue, you know, have Jesus come down. So let's see what he has to say. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was not one to intervene. So his own arm reached salvation for him, and his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness as his breastplate, and the helmet of salvation on his head. Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a minute. I've heard of this before. It's D&D, &D, right? If, uh, if it weren't for this verse, we might not have Bible Man. So... And, and Willie Ames might still be a drunkard. And a fool. I think he... Didn't he relapse? I think he did. I think that was why one of the reasons he left Bible Man was he was still having some issues. He's better now. He's on a cruise ship now, right? Isn't he a cruise ship guy? Last time we looked, that was like a year and a half ago, though. In the journey of Willie Ames, a year is a lifetime. And, you know, I... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if one day we find a cruise ship has crashed and it was Willie Ames' fault. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. Wait, 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 wait. Is the purple parts in between the armor the garments of vengeance? Because they never talk about that. They do never talk about that, so maybe it is. <laughs> According to what they have done, so will he repay. Wrath to his enemies and retribution to his foes. He will repay the islands their due. From the west, people will fear the name of the Lord, and from the rising sun, they will revere his glory. So God um, apparently created enemies for himself because, of course, he created everything in the universe, and he's just a little kid playing with toys, apparently. Oh, you're my enemy! Pew, pew! Well, let me put on my costume. Vengeance! Ha, ha, ha! And then he kills him or something, I don't know. It's kind of horrifying because I used to dismember my toys. Yeah, he's like the asshole kid who likes to burn ants, like, for fun, funsies. Sid from Toy Story? Here we're going to get sort of descriptions of what God's going to do. This chapter is called God's Day of Vengeance and Redemption. And it's fucking beautiful. So sit down and get ready for this shit. It's literally his Liam Neeson monologue. It is I proclaiming victory, mighty to save. Why are your garments red like those of one treading the winepress? I have trodden the winepress alone from the nations no one was with me. I trampled them in my anger and trod them down with my wrath. Their blood splattered my garments and I stained all my clothing. That's pretty graphic imagery for a loving God that loves you and would never want to harm you. He loves you. <laughs> I love you, but I have no problem. <laughs> the thing is there, you can't even argue God's doing it like... I do love them, but I need to punish them because they've been bad. He's, like, relishing in it. He's happy about it. He's like, oh, oh, why are, why are our clothes so red? Oh, did I accidentally slaughter all your people? Ugh. It's almost like he's fucking turned on by the gore. Oops, some got on my face. It was for me. The day of vengeance. The year for me to redeem had come. I looked, but there was no one to help. I was appalled that no one gave support. So my own arm achieved salvation for me, and my own wrath sustained me. I trampled the nations in my anger. In my wrath, I made them drunk and poured their blood on the ground. Immediately followed by... 
I will tell of the kindness of the Lord, the deeds for which he is to be praised, according to all the Lord has done for us. Yes, the many good things he has done for Israel, according to his compassion and many kindnesses. Let me show you this, so you don't think I'm making this up. I'm gonna, okay, see, see, see this? See this? Hold on. Circling. Okay. We, we have visual aids today. This is, okay. this is pretty impressive. This is God talking about being covered in the blood of his enemies and how much he loves vengeance. This is talking about God's compassion. Do you see the issue? <laughs> well, I mean, can, okay, so, so if God starts having a monologue about murdering everybody and being covered in the blood of his enemies, wouldn't the correct and, like, survival instinct response for a human being, like, you're, you're great, I... I wouldn't want to be on your bad side. You're pretty <laughs> cool. So God was dictating this to the guy who wrote this chapter of the Bible, Isaiah yeah, or whatever. The that's fuck pretty much it. Right. It's basically like uh, it's basically like um, in Breaking Bad. It's like Tuco's henchman. Yeah, or like in uh, Red Dragon when he's talking to Philip Seymour Hoffman and he's like, yeah. "Do you see? Do you see?" And Philip Seymour Hoffman's like, "I see, I see." And then he probably went home and did heroin or something. I don't know. Anyway, you think Willie Ames knows how to party? Philip Seymour Hoffman knew how to party. <laughs> All right, on to chapter 65. This one, again, we're going to read parts of because it sounds very Christian-y, and you can see sort of the development of the philosophy of Jesus and Christianity and Reformation Jews uh, within. So let's take a look. Judgment and Salvation. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. To a nation that did not call on my name, I said, Here I am. Here I am. Again, with the Christian verbiage, Christian imagery, and Christianity a lot, you'll have people talking about how God, Jesus, whatever, often comes to people whether or not they want him to, uh, because he knows what's best, and he will come to those who least feel they need him. Again, a lot of these ideas coming from the Old Testament, not the New. All day long I have held out my hands to an obstinate people who walk in ways not good, pursuing their own imaginations, a people who continually provoke me to my very face, offering sacrifices in gardens and burning incense on altars of brick, who sit amongst the graves and spend their night keeping secret vigil, who eat the flesh of pigs, and whose pots hold broth of impure meat, who say, Keep away, don't come near me, for I am too sacred for you. Such people are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that keeps burning all day. So, basically, God's saying, like, yeah, these Jews, they really piss me off. They're basically living in my head rent-free and tormenting me every day. Why did you, why did you make people knowing that they were going to annoy you forever? Right. It'd be like if I said, hey, Jake, I'm about to go kick my foot as hard as I can against that wall. And presumably you would say, don't do that. You will break yeah. your toe. Yeah. And then I go do it anyway. And then I'm like, Jake, why did you let me do that? I broke my toe. When Hugo is in control of his own actions, uh, and you have even less omniscience than God. Right. So you, you are, you've been informed that kicking your foot into that wall will probably hurt, but not definitely hurt. God knows <laughs> every outcome ever, right? I mean, it's Should. impossible for him to... Be confused about a thing. Right. But of course, God works in mysterious ways, a.k.a. you have a good point and I don't have a rebuttal for it, so fuck you. That's the translation of that from Christian, if you don't know, by the way. Maybe God is omniscient, but he's also retarded. <laughs> so he doesn't that know how to interpret explain, the information. That would explain <laughs> so much if our universe is the one with the mentally challenged deity. <laughs> Oh, my God. I'd be like, oh, that poor thing. Okay. All right. He's so cute, though. Why does Don't... he take his pants all the way down when he pees? It's funny because he's retarded and we can laugh at it instead of being disgusted by a normal person. You got to be careful with his apocalypses, though. They're ten times stronger than a normal god's apocalypse. See, it stands written before me. I will not keep silent, but will pay back in full. I will pay it back into their laps, both your sins and the sins of your ancestors, says the Lord. Because they burned sacrifices on the mountains and defiled me on the hills, I will measure into their laps the full payment of their former deeds. They're talking about here the Jews straying from their uh, normal religious uh, stuff. They're sort of bleeding their culture and their religion with the religions of people around them, people who have conquered them or they have conquered. 
which happens. It's a cultural exchange, you know? Um, Richard Dawkins would call it memes, and not like Pepe. They mean, like, what the actual sociological meaning of the word meme is. Uh, and whoever wrote this, not happy about it. So... Whatever. Well, I mean, conservatives are never happy about that, and I gotta imagine the very devout Jews were pretty conservative in their views. But, I, I mean, cultural bleeding happens no matter what in every situation. Like, the fact that you know what a taco is right now says that cultural bleeding is, like, a good thing, because tacos also are pizza. objectively delicious. Oh, pizza, yeah. Pizza's good. I'm uh, in a pizza mood today, can you tell? Hot dogs? Huh? Feeling, feeling a little hot dog? A little Polish action going on? Oh, are hot dogs Polish? Hot, I mean, well, yeah, I, I tube meats are Polish two, right, in general. That's what so. I meant. Yeah, I assumed like sausage. Yeah. Cool. And I think hamburgers are from Germany. So thanks, world, for making mediocre versions of everything so we could perfect it. You're welcome. This is what the Lord says. As when juice is still found in a cluster of grapes and people say, don't destroy it, there is still blessing in it. So will I do in my behalf of my servants. I will not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, those who will possess my mountains. My chosen people will inherit them, and there will my servants live. Sharon will become a pasture for flocks in the valley of Accor, a resting place for the herds, for my people who seek me. But... As for you who forsake the Lord and forget my holy mountain and who spread a table for fortune and fill bowls of mixed wine for destiny, I will destine you for the sword. It's actually a pretty good wordplay. If you didn't get what he's saying there, he's saying, for those of you who, who pour wine and give sacrifices to other gods and for destiny, I will make it your destiny to be punished. Zing! Zing God. And of course, if you didn't catch the first part, anyone, uh, he's saying right now the Jews are terrible, but the next generation or the generation after that, Christians would say the generation that followed Jesus, um, uh, they're going to come out and be better and be better Jews and follow me correctly. And now we're going to skip ahead to uh, new heavens and new earth. This is like um, God's five-year plan for the future of uh, everything. He probably had like a little model. It's also the establishment of lots of heaven imagery. Again, Christian wording uh, as far as the afterlife. And remember, we've talked about Sheol in the past, which is sort of early, earlier Old Testament Jewish afterlife, which is much more like Hades or some sort of so, uh, afterlife like that. Now, as we get closer and closer to the New Testament, you'll see things more and more resembling the afterlife that a Christian might picture. The beginning of this feels really ham-fisted Reformation. Like, they're just like, yeah, we wrote it down. Now it's... It seems like abrogation to me. It seems very sudden here because we're looking at it in retrospect, but these chapters are written so far apart and geographically far apart sure. and isolated That's, from each other. Yeah. It really is only in hindsight looking at the Bible it looks that way. It really, I, I guarantee the people who didn't even notice the changes to their religion over the, <laughs> however long they were kicking around the area, they probably barely noticed. <laughs> So verse 17, See, I will create new heavens and new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight, and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and crying will be heard in it no more. So if you've ever talked to Christians in the rapture about the rapture, You've probably heard them talk about a uh, new earth, uh, heaven, uh, new Jerusalem, stuff like that. That comes from here. It's um, kind of horrifying. Um, so the idea here is that the actions in your in your mortal life, this right now, affect how you will be in heaven. And this is kind of, <clears throat> this isn't the Christian heaven, obviously, but it's a move from Sheol to more of a paradise style thing, which they've dabbled with in the past, like the Garden of Eden imagery and stuff. But this is this is more of like a, a promissory afterlife. And um <laughs> it's just basically saying like Jerusalem's gonna be super great. <clears throat> if if you if you're a person, if you, if your soul is in there after you're not the same person if you don't if you're not able to cry or weep or be upset. You're just you're it, it's fundamentally changing the person that you are. And that doesn't mean that it's paradise. It just means that you're not able to feel it not be paradise. Does that make sense? Yeah, not only that, but on top of all of this, well, that's how a Christian would view this. I genuinely think that at the time, the contemporaries and Jewish people didn't see it as God will literally create a new Jerusalem and a new earth, and right. that's the rapture. I've heard that's how it's this, this Old Testament 
uh, section I've heard described that way by Christians. They say, no, it is a literal creation of a new version of this, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of them think the timeline, I've basically seen them when they try and uh, uh, reconcile this and Revelations, for instance. The timeline they generally put together is uh, the Antichrist will come, uh, rule for, I want to say it's seven years. Uh, in league with the Pope, who is secretly also evil. <laughs> and <laughs> then Jesus will return, stop them, rule for a thousand years, and then after that, God will create new earth, new Jerusalem. That's what they say. And if that sounds batshit crazy to you, congratulations, you're not batshit crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's so, in Revelation, by the way, a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, And even a lot of that's not even in Revelation. A lot of that's... Revelation's going to be a bitch because not only are we going to have to cover the content of it, we're going to have to cover people's interpretations of it. And the context of it because it's literally a fever dream. And that's not a joke. A guy hallucinated this in a dream. (laughs) I'm not kidding either. I've also heard another person uh, in regard to Revelation. They said it sounds like a trip someone took on mushrooms or something similar. Couldn't have been LSD. LSD didn't exist. Well, the uh, the oracles the oracles very nearby in Greece used to actually have hallucinatory drugs uh, from the uh, I forget what the, the the gas is called, but they 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 were meant to be in a cave. The gas made you hallucinate. It felt spiritual to the people there, so they put the oracles in there. They literally would just trip balls all the time. And so it's not it's not it's not uncommon. This hallucinogenics aren't modern. All I'm gonna say is, I 100% buy the revelations, uh, psychedelic trip thing. They are. I think that's the correct version, for reasons I won't say why, but you can probably infer. Sounds about right to me. Wink. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere child. The one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so again, this isn't heaven, obviously, because you can die. Yeah. It's the beta. It's sort of the beta for heaven. (laughs) It is. It's kind of like the Diet Coke of heavens. It's like... Well, you, I mean, you still die, but you're not going to be sad when you do it. Like, do people not mourn your loss then? Do people forget about you? <laughs> like, I, I like to ask this question, and I probably brought it up before, um, to people that, when they argue heaven at me, um, if you die and you go to heaven, is it still heaven if the person you love most goes to hell? And I don't, I think the answer is no, personally. But I've heard, well, you just don't, you don't think about it. It's like, well, that's you're not the same person, then. That's not heaven. That's just a fucking matrix. I don't want to be in that. It's not even a matrix. That's a matrix with an imperfect copy of you that doesn't yeah. act or feel like you do. So, so even if there is a heaven, I'm dead. It doesn't matter. My identity as a person is gone. I no longer exist. Can you even remember? Can you even remember the life you had? Because what about the unhappy memories? Like, what if you were a rape victim, but you go to heaven? Do you remember the rape fondly? <laughs> What if you're a rapist, but you became a Christian? Do you remember being a rapist? Can you and the rape rape victim be friends now? What happens? I don't <laughs> Oh, boy. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant <laughs> vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them or plant and others eat. <laughs> Only subsistence farming in heaven. Only subsistence farming. Thomas Jefferson, super happy about this chapter. <laughs> He, this is probably in the Jefferson Bible. Probably. No, he only did the New Testament. That's right. They will not labor in pain, nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune, for they will be a people blessed by the Lord. And they and their descendants with them, before they call, I will answer. When they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. Serpent's got the fucking raw end of that deal. You gotta eat dust now, you piece of shit. They also mention that in um, Genesis, by the way. God Mm -hmm. says there that serpents will uh, be forced to crawl on their belly and eat the dust of the earth. I'm assuming uh, (laughs) this is sort of a retcon, because at some point maybe they figured out, hey, wait a minute, snakes don't eat dust. So now this writer is maybe saying... Oh, yeah, but it, no, that's going to that's, that's gonna happen later. <laughs> that's going to happen later, guys. Trust me. God was talking about the future, which he, of course, knew about in Genesis because God knows everything, including that that was going to happen and he would have to murder 
a lot of people and punish most people who've ever existed in hell just so he could save like one percent of all the things that have ever lived in heaven even though he's really not because it's not them because they don't have the correct memories and free will that they had on earth and also he knew that when he said that and inspired the genesis writer that that would have to be retconned later in isaiah several hundred years later religion finishing up we're gonna finish out uh in the final chapter chapter 66 and then uh next time we'll be on jeremiah which uh i don't know that much about i'm gonna have to do some research actually for jeremiah so cool these are the ones i look on with favor those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word but whoever sacrifices a bull is like one who kills a person and whoever offers a lamb is like one who breaks a dog's neck whoever makes a grain offering is like one who presents pig's blood and whoever burns memorial incense is like one who worships an idol so now we have a uh, another retcon and that is on the uh, this is when you can no longer make sacrifices to god this is now a new thing we we stopped it long before Jesus took over that role as being the lamb that stops sacrifice. That's Christians don't understand what they're talking about because uh, apparently they didn't read to page 416 of their Bible like a bunch of lazy fucks. <laughs> so yeah, the, uh, the animal sacrifice thing, which actually my own mom brings up a lot. For, my mom, I know you're watching this. I love you. But when we talk about religion, you bring up like the same seven talking points that I can tell you're just repeating exactly what you were told in Sunday school. Like you're not thinking about the concepts. I can tell you're just, you're parroting, because it's, the phrase is exactly the same every time. Um, so I can tell you're parroting something. And Coming not out strong it. against mom. No, I, 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 it's, we talk about this kind of stuff. I think we can be honest with each other. Um, but she'll <laughs> often bring up when we're talking about this stuff. Oh, but when Jesus did the sacrifice on the cross, the, the curtain in the temple split. That only happened in one version of events, the latest one that was written like 90 years after the fact, and I believe that's also the one in which zombies rise from the fucking grave, so that didn't happen. But anyway, uh, she'll often say, oh, and the, the curtain in the temple split, and that's when it was decided that, you know, you can't, you don't have to sacrifice animals anymore. Jesus is the sacrifice. Nope, it's right here. We're not even in the New Testament yet. <laughs> Mama, Hu Mama Hugo, this is 800 years before Jesus existed. I'm just saying, and I know you. I know you got a thing for me, and I get it, but uh, you're wrong, and that's that's okay. We'll just move on from this, you know. Maybe we'll do. We'll talk about it over dinner. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I think Jake just turned my mom on. And this is gross. <laughs> They have chosen their own ways, and they delight in their abominations. So I will choose harsh treatment for them, and will bring on them what they dread. For when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, no one listened. They did evil in my sight, and they chose what displeased me. You sound like a whiny girlfriend. <laughs> so It does. But he's also kind of, again, you can see where hell's sort of coming from. He's starting to say, if you disobey me, if you don't take my offer... Bad things are going to happen to you. They haven't sort of solidified yet what that means. There's lots of burning imagery, though. Remember, earlier God said those who disobey him are like uh, smoke in his nostrils constantly. Mm -hmm. so I mean, he, also like grape wine, wine grapes. Right. There's though. a lot of stuff. But you can see the sort of amorphous ideas of Christian afterlife starting to form and it's yeah. so fascinating. I love it. Right. So, and keep in mind, this is roughly, we're, we're like 1,200 years in. So, I mean, this is how long it takes, like, a reformation to happen. We still have 800 more years to go before Christianity becomes a thing. And then after that, Martin Luther takes another 1,400 years, right? Or 1,300? It takes a while. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, though, I think it actually does speed up over time, especially now. For instance... Well, uh, information. We've talked about on uh, TQR, for instance, the Quran Reloaded. Do we think... Uh, we had a whole episode where a big theme of it was, do you think uh, Islam can have a reformation uh, and and make it so it's not as harmful of a religion globally as it is today, because obviously it stems, you know, most global terrorism. That's just right. a fact. Um, uh, and one of the things I was positive about is I think reformations in the modern age are easier because of the access to information and how small the world is now. So I'm hoping instead of taking like a thousand years, maybe in 50 to a century, we can get some, <laughs> some noticeable gains. Not perfect, but hopefully we can... Uh, right. If we could get the like a Lutheran Muslim, like the equivalent of that, where it's not so fucking hardline, decent. Sure. And by the way, if you're someone out there who's like super hardline, like 
oh, we just need to go bomb the countries. We need to what? No, 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 no. Listen, you're dealing with a symptom of a problem. If you're going and killing ISIS or whatever, you're dealing with a symptom of a problem. You're not solving anything. In fact, you're probably making it worse in the long run because you're giving them material to recruit people to their extremist version of Islam. Right, especially when martyrdom is such a central focus on, on uh, you know, their their holy wars. Um, and also, Islam is the problem. Then that's what you need to address. And if you want to address Islam, you can't be just bombing the fuck out of them all the time. It's going to extreme... I'm sure people are now going to say, so what is the solution? I don't know, well, but yeah. that's an honest answer. No one knows what the answer is. Some things just <laughs> suck because people are obstinate idiots, including myself, I'm sure. I, and uh, the, the, the one thing that I think works is knowledge. I think I think education is probably, like most problems we have is just due to ignorance. And most of that ignorance isn't obstinance, which is intentional. It's accidental because they don't fucking know any better like all these people that think like vaccines kill people it's the same thing on a, on a less you know terroristy scale it's just ignorance of a concept and, and they don't get it they just don't they think it's a bad thing so they think westerners are a bad thing that need their religion actively tells them like your life is better if you fuck them up like of course and this is back to the bible it's it's very similar in that vein where these people like you know you gotta, you gotta obey God, and whatever He says is the correct thing. That's how your life gets better. That's how you're rewarded. And if they believe that, of course they do that. So that's why you need Reformation, and education is the only way to do that. I think. Yeah, I agree. Anyway, let's finish this up with the final verse or the final paragraph, <laughs> which is pretty metal as fuck, by the way. And that's uh, in chapter sixty-six, verse twenty-two. As the new heavens and the new earth that I make will endure before me, declares the Lord, so will your name and your descendants endure. From one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord. And they will go out and look on the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. The worms that eat them will not die. The fire that burns them will not be quenched. And they will be loathsome to all mankind. And there you go. There's your fire imagery again. So. Fire imagery and torture, the idea of fields of bodies with worms that don't die, like they're constantly being fed on forever. And fire forever. Unquenchable fire. Yeah, it's uh, getting closer. Surprisingly, haven't seen that album cover yet. So get on it, someone. <laughs> so uh, yeah, lots here. Big, big episode today. This is probably our longest Bible study since fucking Moses. Probably, but it needed it, and I'm, I think we got some productive conversation going, so I hope y'all enjoyed the episode. Hey, we did okay, huh? Huh? This is, why, this is why you come here. Maybe check out our Patreon. Speaking of Patreon, we have uh, a lot of new stuff happening. Um, uh, one thing I want to let everyone know, uh, we have an official Discord, and patrons... And, and this is any patron. There's not like a paywall involved in the in the thing. It's just a a one dollar patron can get access to this. Uh, I have a VIP chat on uh, Patreon, all um, or on Discord, and all patrons get access to that. Um, you'll have a you'll have a link in um, on your wall on Patreon. And so if you guys want to come and chat, I'm on there mm, probably two or three times a week at this point. Uh, Hugo's not on as often, but. Uh, We'll we'll sneak them in every once in a while, I know, I and um, and uh, also um, if if you haven't been around, lots of really awesome fan art. Uh, we have debate and politics sections. We have just memes sections. We even have a cute and fluffy animal section where you can just go and look at cute and fluffy animals from the community. Um, but if you're an artist or something and you want to show your fan art off, I do use it from time to time. Um, and I'm I'm genuinely in there. Like I was up far too late the other day talking to some fans, one of which was Australian, and uh, so. I mean, it's just a thing. If you want a little more access to us, totally thing. And you don't have to, by the way, you don't have to be a Patreon patron to get access to the Discord. It's just the VIP section of the Discord, which maybe we'll play games or something. Uh, I know um, some fans have been recently playing Cards Against Humanity. I haven't had an opportunity to get there yet, 
but that's more of a VIP thing for me, I think, anyway. Oh, that'd be um, fun. Yeah, and, or, uh, like, something like Rocket League, or just bullshitting, honestly. Um, so, and I'm on there regardless of whether or not, like, I'll, I'll jump around in the chats, so sometimes it'll just be like, hey, I just want to talk to people, but if there's a VIP thing. Is there um, an app for Discord that I can download? There is an app on phones for Discord, and you can still do voice chat on there. Huh. Um, I, I think both are pretty well done, so... Uh, link in uh, the description for the Discord. Uh, so come on, come on over and and do that, huh? Once you ha- do, it? yeah. <laughs> so, by the way, speaking of Patreon, um, <clears throat> it's now time for the return of the patron live shows. Uh, I apologize, yes. we missed some months. Jake's busy, stuff's going on, so that is back, and we should be up to our regular schedule now. Probably it should be, but anyway, there's one at the end of the week. So, what day are we doing that? Let's do it Friday. Okay, we're doing it Friday at uh, what time? What time works for you? Let's do it at 3 p.m. Eastern. 3 p.m. Eastern on Friday we'll do it. Or maybe we'll do it later. Five? If you guys, if you guys want it later, you can do it. Let, know. You know what? Actually, in the comments, if you're a, only if you're a patron, please let us know which time works better. We'll decide. We'll send out the emails and patron messages, and you'll know by then. Right. Because so. I'm thinking 3 o'clock is great for me, but like people have 9 to 5 jobs. Right. So. Now, oh, well, 3 to you is 5 on the East Coast, though, too. Think about that. So 3 to me? That'd be 3 Mountain, which we can do. That's 5 Eastern. Oh, so, well, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Everyone just... just this was very haphazard. This is the end we of were the not episode. prepared for that conversation. This episode is done. <laughs> you guys remember I'm... these? These these still exist. Oh fuck. Yeah. Uh Harambe, since we're talking about dead memes. Uh that's a double dead meme. Here's a uh that. What is that? It's Hugo I can't and Jake see it Coke all. bottle. I have a different camera. We have a Hugo and Jake Coke bottle. Yeah. I showed this what? dude. Did you No, you gotta bring bring it down just a touch. Oh. I can't. Can you see it now? Did you get sent that, or did you order that yourself? It was a gift. Oh, that's... Huh. From I, my um... mom! Hey. Don't fuck my mom. <laughs>